Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do polar alignment even when you can't see Polaris. This is useful, for example, when the north is blocked by an obstruction like a house or a tree. My name is John Robinson, the AstroTard. You're watching the Deep Sky Channel. Okay, so you want to polar align your equatorial mount, but you can't see Polaris for whatever reason. In the northern hemisphere, this certainly works. This might even work in the southern hemisphere. So let's say uh, you have an obstruction like a tree or a house, or you can't see Polaris because it's in the middle of the day. So what do you do? How do you polar align your equatorial mount in those situations? The way I do this, and I do this all the time because my mount is basically set up in the back of my house, my house is blocking the northern view. So I can't see Polaris from my telescope from my normal setup. So this might help you if you're in a similar situation. So I'm going to show you how to do it. There's a two-step approach. The first step is to get roughly polar aligned with an app called PS Align Pro. The second step is to fine tune and get that dialed in really well. And we do that using Sequence Generator Pro Drift Align Utility. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do polar alignment without seeing Polaris. As you can see, it's bright outside. It's still in the middle of the day. Duh. So we can't see Polaris. The other thing that you'll notice is north is generally pointing right where my house is. I mean, the house is in the way of Polaris, so I can't see it. So what do you, if you have a similar situation, this might help you. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our mount is level right here. Check the mount levelness right here. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to set the right ascension and declination level to be absolutely perfectly zero. So we're going to start with the right ascension and we're going to turn this 90 degrees this way. And then I'm going to get my bubble level and we're going to measure levelness here. Okay, what you want to look for here is to make sure that this is absolutely level. Look at that. How perfect is that? First time out. Once you know that that's level, then we're going to set this. In my case, you want to set it to 6 o'clock or 1800. And it's not quite on there, so I'm going to have to reset that. Okay, got it? Okay, now that that's set, we're going to rotate this back to the home position. And now this needs to be right on zero. When that's on zero, you know that this is perfectly parallel up and down because we did a bubble level on it. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on our declination. So I'm going to start by rotating this 90 degrees, releasing the lock here. So you come up here and make sure this is perfectly level. And now what we're going to do is set this to zero. Might slightly off. Okay, I'm setting my ring to zero. All right, now that that's done, this is level, that's set to zero. Now I'm gonna rotate it back. What I'm doing here is rotating this into the zero position and I have a mark up here where zero is. And it happens to be 90 over here. Now this is perfectly set to zero and zero for right ascension and declination, okay? Now we're ready to do the rough polar alignment. To do that, I use an app on my smartphone. I'm using an iPhone. The app is called PS Align Pro. This one in here, and it's the one with the little sunshine on there. Click on the sunshine. What this is giving you is sort of a bullseye and an arrow. And what you're going to do is put this on your telescope. When that arrow lines up right in the bullseye, you're roughly polar aligned. All right, now you can see I have the the iPhone uh, with an elastic band connected to an L bracket in here. I've already gone through the trouble of making sure that it's in place there and I've uh, tightened it down and I've also made sure that it's roughly level. Can you see that that's level there, honey? Roughly. 
and if you can see this bullseye up here there's a little indicator for where the X is and I'm going to adjust my RA and deck to get that right in the middle so I'm going to need you to point right there and now we're just going to adjust this thing until we can get that RA and deck to line up you can see I'm rotating my mount and you can see how the uh, honey you can see how the uh, X is lining up like that now this will get you roughly polar aligned from here once we're roughly polar aligned and on the bullseye then we can complete our polar alignment with the telescope in place from inside the house Jesus is a friend of mine Jesus is my friend okay so now we're ready to begin dialing in the polar alignment we're going to do this inside of the house because I have a USB cable that's connecting my equipment outside to my laptop in the kitchen inside and I do that so that I can avoid getting bit by mosquitoes I can do it in the comfort of my own kitchen I'm going to use two pieces of software they're both free and they're both downloadable all of you can have access to them first one's called Stellarium the second one is called PHD2 and before I get into the software let's talk about the celestial sky itself we need to define our terms up front so there's, imagine if you will, you go out into the sky and you draw with your finger an imaginary line from north to south. The arc that you painted on the sky from north to south is called the celestial meridian. Now do the same thing, draw an imaginary line from east to west. The arc that you painted on the sky there is called the celestial equator. Now imagine that point in the sky where the equator, east and west, crosses and meets the uh, celestial meridian north and south. That point in the sky where those two meet is where we're going to point our telescope to do this drift align. As it turns out, that point in the sky is exactly 90 degrees orthogonal from celestial north. Here's an illustration of what I'm talking about. Here you can see the celestial meridian from north to south. You can see the celestial equator from east to west and you can see the point where we would normally want to align which is the polar equator and now you can also see where we're going to align to instead the point where those two cross each other that's also in the 90 degree position orthogonal from the North Pole and that's where we're going to point our telescope I actually used Stellarium to point me in that direction so from Stellarium I find where the, turn on equatorial grid, where the south crosses the east line, right here, and I point my telescope right there where the south crosses the east. Basically, we're 90 degrees orthogonal from the celestial north. Celestial north is right up here, and 90 degrees down from there is where my telescope is currently pointed, right there. Okay? And that's the good starting position to do this drift align, and it needs to be pointed in that direction. So, <clears throat> with our telescope in the pointing in that direction, we select a star and we do a tools drift align, and uh, go ahead and press drift. Now, in my case, when the scope is on the left, adjustment of the right ascension on the left side makes the graph go down and what I mean by graph is we're looking at the RA and the deck here we're mostly focused on the declination line the red and we want the red declination to cross with the RA right here on this zero line that I'm drawing here we want both of them to cross at that point you can see that the red is pointing way up which right now means that uh, I need to dial my declination on the left side to, to bring that scope down. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. Go outside, I'll click adjust. And now I'm going to drift the scope down to the left. <coughs> Excuse me. That's coalescing around the zero line a little better. I think that's pretty darn close. I'm going to call that pretty good right there, within four degrees. 
Let's go and adjust, uh, <clears throat> adjust our altitude now. So now this is checking the, the, the declination. And let's drift on that same mark. So we're still looking at the deck line here in this graph. And uh, since I'm pointing to the south, <coughs> when I rotate my scope in the downward position, down will cause the scope to look up. So deck down equals scope up. So if the red line is down and I need to adjust it, then I will adjust in the upward direction, counterintuitive. But this is pretty darn good. So this means that I'm basically close to my default declination of 33 point something degrees. Basically right on. I shouldn't be too surprised because I haven't adjusted that since the last time I ran this. So I'm going to call that good. Okay, so that is drift align. Okay, so I wanted to show you the results of the PS Align Pro, the Drift Align, and the uh, Guiding Assist, and uh, on the imaging session tonight. So here's a, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the Crescent Nebula tonight. This is a, an oxygen filtered five minute exposure. It's a little bit fuzzy because it is somewhat overcast tonight. But let's have a look at the guiding. So I'm pretty happy with what I see. The total uh, error there is 0.46 or 0.98 arc seconds. And I see a pretty constant blip and change of the red and the blue. The target that I'm focused on right now happens to be in the high eastern, northeastern sky. And uh, it should arc in this direction following the Milky Way throughout the night. And uh, so if, if the weather can hold out, I think my guiding's in good shape. This is pretty reasonable. I'm happy with that, which tells me that our, our polar line's pretty close and our drifter line did the job. And I should also say that when I was doing Sequence Generator Pro, the uh, plate solve did a pretty fast job of finding the target. So I feel confident that, you know, we're pretty close on to polar tonight. Okay, let's recap. If you can't see Polaris, this technique could be helpful to you. There's a two-part process to this. The first is use PS Align Pro to get roughly polar aligned, and then use Stellarium to point your telescope 90 degrees orthogonal from the celestial north pole, and then finally use PHD2 drift align tool to really dial in the right ascension and declination. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. If you found this useful, please hit subscribe and tell me if I screwed up or did anything wrong. I'd appreciate your feedback. See you next time. Bye.